Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett along with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome in two friends today. Yes, we're going to uh, talk about uh, public schools today in Oklahoma City. I'm a graduate of public schools and uh, very proud to say that from Northwest Classen. I you am too. Well, you are from right. Putnam City, from a I different think. different district. Yes, right. yeah. we're going to have the Oklahoma City uh, Foundation for Public Schools uh, mm -hmm folks on today to talk about what's going on in their organization, why there is such an organization, what they plan to do. Yeah. I think you'll find it very interesting. Yeah. Why is it necessary to have a foundation that looks after our largest public school district? We'll learn more today on The Verdict. fortunate enough to premiere every film that I've produced at Sundance. Seeing your film on the big screen for the first time in front of an audience at the Sundance Film Festival is unmatched. I'm Chad Burris. I'm an attorney, film producer, film financier, economic development financier, and I'm Chickasaw. Nobody can argue that modern day media, cinema, has perpetuated this myth, this idea of the Indian and what that is. And just the idea that, you know, all Indians look one way or all Indians act one way is a terrible injustice. Being able to have filmmakers tell stories that are representative of some element of his surroundings, his upbringing, what they know, what they see through their own eyes, that other people get a chance to bear witness to um, around the world. I think that's amazing. For me personally, being an Indian today means being responsible, honest, progressive, and giving that back to the community. Learn more about today's Chickasaws at profilesofanation.com. Hello there and welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to have uh, join us uh, on my right, uh, Mary Malone. She is the uh, President and CEO of the Oklahoma City Public Schools Foundation. Uh, Mary uh, uh, <coughs> did her undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma. For 20 years she was with the Journal Record uh, in a number of positions, uh, finally as uh, publisher and uh, the editor. Uh, and the president. She's been involved in many civic activities. She's uh, certainly now uh, serving with distinction on the Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority. She's the first and only woman ever appointed to our Urban Renewal Authority, which as you know has been quite active uh, in the last couple of decades. Uh, in 2014 she became president and CEO of the Oklahoma City Public Schools Foundation. This is uh, her third appearance, uh, second appearance on The Verdict, I'm sorry. Mary, welcome back. Thank you very much. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. To my left is the boss. If we seem very <laughs> deferential, it's because <laughs> Percy Kirk is our boss here at Cox. Uh, we are really glad to have Percy. He is the vice chair <clears throat> of the Oklahoma Public Schools Foundation, uh, among other things. Uh, he did his undergraduate work at Wichita State, <clears throat> got his master's degree at Friends University. He's a senior vice president, <clears throat> sorry, and regional manager for Cox Communication Region, which includes uh, the state of Oklahoma plus some other states. Uh, he is uh, on the board of directors of the Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce, uh, the board of trustees of the Oklahoma National Memorial, and this is his first appearance on the verdict. He reminded us that while we've done almost 790 shows, he hadn't been on yet. We're, we're trying to correct that today. Percy, glad to have you. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, Mary, I wanted to get started with, with you and ask, the, the how did this begin? Why, how and why, what were the circumstances around beginning a foundation to help out the I-89 school district? You know, the foundation has really been around for quite some time. It started in 1984 and there, there were some really important people that decided that 
the district needed some support. Um, Lou Kerr was one of the founding board members. Ray Potts was actually the first chair of the board. And what, what they envisioned at the beginning was a way for the community to rally around the district. You think about the 1980s, there was a lot going on back mm -hmm. then and um, changing demographics even then. And I think what they envisioned first was, was to find strategic ways to help with funding, help with support, for things that the district couldn't afford, yeah. which is still very much our mission. You know, we take public-private partnerships for granted today, but you know, back then it was kind of a, a new step for it was. for the private sector to be helping fund education. Absolutely, and you know, the the foundation for Oklahoma City School, Public Schools really had a, a major leadership role in drafting the blueprint for what became Apps for Kids. Mm -hmm. They played a very active role in that. Uh, <clears throat> Percy, what I know you, that you're vice chair uh, of the board. Uh, what's your role, and, and how do you see your responsibilities in this with this organization? So I, I am vice chair, and our chair is Cliff Hudson, and we have uh, about twenty. Another Northwest class and graduate. Yes. I have to yeah. throw that in every chance. I yeah, and a pretty good guy. <laughs> and, yeah, and, indeed. And so we have about twenty, twenty-five people on the board, and then we have an advisory board. And we have asked each of our board members to be involved in internal committees and external committees. And so some of the committees we hope to talk to you about this morning, uh, we, we walk through. I happen to lead the Partners in Action Committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have, we have another advisory board member here on the set, do we not? We do, we do, we do. Hold up your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah, by well, the way. For I, think, I, I don't know if there's a, a leader inside Oklahoma City that doesn't recognize the need to get more involved with the performance of that school system, because it reflects on the entire community. Well, and uh, of course, I guess today with budgetary constraints being what mm -hmm. they are in the last uh, couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, and the involvement's more important uh, than ever. It absolutely is, and you, you know, you think about the the makeup of Oklahoma City Public Schools. Forty-six thousand students are part of this, the state's largest school district, and more than ninety percent of these kids are living at or below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. So, to your point, Mayor, our city really can't be completely successful mm -hmm. if we don't support this school district and help help every one of these students be successful. I suspect that in the beginning, back in the early 80s when this organization started though, the, the inference was that the private sector would help on the education side, perhaps provide supplies or perhaps help teachers. And it seems like it has evolved to more on the, on the social side because the families inside the district have so many social needs that in turn affects the educational performance of their kids. It absolutely does. The, what we are asking our public education system to do is to be much more than a teacher. They are, um, they are really kind of social workers because these kids are coming to school with, with so many issues. They're coming to school hungry. They're coming to school traumatized many times, but, uh, but a, lot, a lot of them also are coming to school with very wonderful, caring families and parents, but these parents are maybe working three or four jobs just to get food on the table. Mm -hmm. So these the kids are living in homes with lots and lots of kids. They may not get the rest that they need. So that's then incumbent upon the teachers and the administrators and the community has to help. So how do you know help. where to start? I mean, if, if the needs are so broad, yeah. how does someone who's trying to run a foundation, because you know, if, if you start over here, someone's gonna say, well, you really need yeah. to work in this area. And then someone else is gonna say, well, you really need to be working in this area. <laughs> how do you know whom, who, whom to listen to? And you know, that that's a great point. And I will say that sometimes my head just spins <laughs> with, with the people having great ideas and we can't do all of them. So then it really comes back to business principles. We mm -hmm. have to have strategic focuses. We have to have lanes that we stay in. The, mm -hmm. the district can't do it alone. The foundation also can't do it alone. So we have worked really hard to define with alignment with the district what we need to focus on. And when people come to me with, with ideas that don't quite fit, then we, I, we say, 
great idea, but th this is what we focus on. <coughs> for, the, for the long ahead, term. Yeah. For the long term, yeah. right. Well, let me ask you, Percy, we alluded to it a minute ago that the financial needs of uh, public schools in general, of course, are, is pretty well known, and we've done several shows on it already. Uh, but uh, does this change the focus of the foundation in any way, the fact that uh, this public school district, along with many public school districts, are really hurting for financial assistance? You know, I wouldn't say it changes the focus. As Mary said, we, we have lanes that we run in, and we think it's important to stay in those lanes. However, it certainly heightens yeah. the, the need to really move quickly to get everybody involved. As the mayor points out, we, we have such a great community, and everybody's working really hard to get things done. It's really important for us to help the kids and have a strong, strong school district. If we don't, I don't see how we have such a great community. Yeah. Well, Mary, we've had a lot of turnover in the superintendent's role in the district. How has that impacted the foundation's ability to, to have a, you know, a, a consistent conversation? It has evolved quite a bit. Looking back historically, I think they, this foundation started and had a great relationship with the district. I don't think that's always been the case. Mm -hmm. I've been here not quite two years. It was one of my primary goals to partner with the district and the district leadership. Now, we've had a change in superintendents, but what I am so optimistic about is that what we have in Aurora Laura who came in um, as a finalist for the superintendent job that when the board hired Rob New, she came in as an associate superintendent. She has learned about the community. She's learned about the district. Her credentials are amazing. And she's very committed to Oklahoma City. So we don't miss a beat this time. Mm -hmm. I think the, the changes <clears throat> and the lack of continuity in that office have have certainly not helped the district move forward. And Aurora Laura is currently the uh, interim uh, superintendent Correct. and many presume that she will be hired full time by the board. Yes. We're gonna take a break and come back. We're visiting with Percy Kirk and Mary Malone. They are very involved in the Oklahoma City School Foundation. And we're gonna let you know more about how you can help and get involved in the district when we return on The Verdict. With the invention of prosthetics, loss of limb no longer meant loss of hope. The turning point? A scientist inspired by the flexibility made possible by natural gas components. Mankind's greatest achievements are often made possible with components from oil and natural gas. With our generation's ingenuity, these abundant Oklahoma resources will continue to unlock opportunity for people around the globe. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Welcome back to The Verdict, Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and we're talking about the Oklahoma City School Public Foundation um, with Mary Malone and, and Percy Kirk. Um, what projects currently do you have that are working out there that, that people are seeing that trying to address a need that currently exists? We, we've got a number of projects like Donors Choose. Do you want to talk about Donors Choose? Mm -hmm. I, that, and that really was the first program that we started w once I took my role at the foundation 
the, the foundation had been for a number of years working on some really important programs to support teachers directly. But what we figured out was they, they weren't necessarily the most efficient. And so we examined those right away, analyzed what was good and what wasn't so good. And, we, and the solution we found to support teachers and classrooms directly is a partnership with Donors Choose. And DonorsChoose.org is a, is a national web-based platform designed by a public school teacher for public school teachers. It's a crowdfunding model. So what the foundation has done in our partnership is that we raise money, we put money into a bank with Donors Choose, and we help fund projects that Oklahoma City public school teachers want and need for their classrooms. We are able to leverage our money. We do matching uh, projects, so we, we will pay for half of the project. The rest of the project is paid by anyone and everyone anonymous donors, donors from literally all over the world that want to support Oklahoma City public school teachers. So a teacher so, lists a need yes, that they have, yes. and then someone who feels a, a specific inspiration to, uh, to address that need can go onto this website and, and, uh, and that indicate is, that they want to help fund that it. That is exactly right. So a donor can go in and, and pay a dollar, they can pay five dollars, they can donate five hundred dollars to support a teacher and it, it's really a great model a 21st century model mm -hmm. because we don't have to house supplies um, if yeah. teachers need supplies they can request them there they can request stem projects for their classroom art projects for their classroom books that they may have a need for anything and everything they can post and then we the foundation assists with funding it we've we've helped fund nearly a thousand projects with a total financial impact of nearly five hundred and sixty thousand dollars since what we started time? since November of twenty fourteen. Wow. Well, explain to me one. Take it one step further. Um, if a donor uh, uh, donates five dollars for mm -hmm. a particular uh, teacher, how does that actually get from the donor's contribution to that teacher? It. What happens with it is. The donation is made online. Right. When the project is funded, the goods, the items that the teacher has posted for will actually be sent directly to the teacher in their school. Ah. And then a, a nice follow-up is the kids and the teacher write thank you notes to every single donor, yeah. it, which it's is a, a personal touch. It's mm -hmm. just a beautiful program. You, you have the teacher who puts the need out donors choose organization will look at it and say gosh you can get a better price or there might be something else that you ought to uh, consider as opposed to this they end up then helping to put this out on the web then individuals fund it as Mary mentioned and everybody can participate yeah. and the beautiful thing is you'll get foundations like the Gates Foundation or people who just have an interest for supporting this Oklahoma City or this need uh, willing to support it. Tell me about Partners in Action, which I know is another program. Partners in Action is something that we really kicked off in September of last year, and it's a follow-up of the great commitment uh, work that the district took place where they went out and they listened to members of the community and teachers and students and said, where are the needs? and what we recognized is we needed to help tie the community to the district and, and to the students and the, the needs of the district. And so what we have with this is we have somebody at the district or people at the district who will work with principals about coming up with needs such as we could use people to help us with tutoring or mentoring or gosh, even potential help on, on something we're thinking about with landscaping or something like that. And then what we as the foundation have is we have a group of people who will work with the district through a program, a software program, that matches interest of people in the community with the needs of the district. And so we will partner and come up with the matches. But this is a way of letting community people who want to be involved 
really tie in and make a difference for the district. How do you recruit the partners? How do you recruit not the school districts or their needs, but the folks who are going to try to solve those problems? You know, I'm really hoping by being on this show we can re <laughs> recruit some new partners with this. But, but it's we we put messages out in uh, a number of forums. We we talk about donors choose. We talk about uh, several of the programs and. and so we're, we're talking to the chamber, we're talking to uh, community organizations to say uh, when you have people who want to help in this area, you know, come to us and then we'll work with the district to help make the matches. So if a, if a hypothetical uh, law firm, for instance, wants to get involved, uh, all its personnel in a particular community project, they could uh, get on the website of the Oklahoma City uh, Public School Foundation and to the Partners in Action portion and indicate an interest and then maybe be taken in. That's right. You sign up in, in Partners in Action on the website and once you sign up you tell what you're interested in doing and you can also at the time look, scan to see what the needs are from uh, the schools. and. You can see if there's something that you hadn't thought about but might be a match for you and you can uh, volunteer to get engaged or it can be something that you think that you could really make a difference on and you can put it out there and the principals on the other hand have the ability to look at that mm -hmm. and say here's something that we think will really make a difference we hadn't thought about it but boy that's a great idea. And technology really does help us make these connections but there's also a lot of of legwork that goes on. You know, we're, we're all calling our community connections anytime we can. Um, I've got a meeting later on today with OU physicians who, who we met by happenstance and they're interested in supporting Edwards Elementary. So we're connecting mm -hmm. them and they're going to start a, a reading mentoring program for them. So, uh, you know, it, we're using technology, we're using community connections to try to make these matches. Well, unless it's confidential, can you list for our viewers just a few names of the partners you now have that are participating? Cox is one of them. Cox has a number of volunteers that go out into the school. Of course, there are some, there are some long-standing partners that are very worthy of recognition, like Sonic and um, Chesapeake and Devon. They all have, the, all of our large employers really started this before we did. Um, and they're working directly in schools. What, what we are working to do with Partners in Action is to broaden that base. Mm -hmm. There is a heightened interest of people. They, everyone knows there's need and they may not know exactly how to plug in. And so we're, we're the vehicle to help them plug in, whether you have five employees or 500. Mm -hmm. Tell but me it, quickly about the Urban Teacher Preparation Academy. This is a, as part of our focus on teacher and leader professional development, the Urban Teacher Prep Academy is a program that we didn't develop and we don't run, but we have supported um, and are helping it expand. It's a program that started out of University of Central Oklahoma. They've got an education degree program and um, it, it's a way for new teachers coming in to work for the first time in an urban setting providing them with mentorship and professional development. And I, I think often about a young person graduating from UCO who may have grown up in Poto or some small community in Oklahoma getting plunked into Oklahoma City Public Schools and all of the issues surrounding an urban environment. This program supports them and the retention level for these teachers is double digits ahead of the national average for teachers. So it, uh -huh. it's that support that these people need. We have run out of time. This segment went so quickly, but Percy and Mary, thank you so much for, for coming on the yeah, show. Thanks. And thank, thank you for you. what you're doing for thank the Oklahoma you. City Public School Foundation. When we return, Kent and I'll have a final word. We'll also give you some information on how you can get involved and help out the foundation. We'll be right back. There are now 11 million of us who live here and work here. I was 15 when I came here six years ago. 
I raised my family here, drive my truck to my job every day. The only difference between now and six years ago, I do it legally. I wanted to. Because this is my home. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. We have uh, uh, children come from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we've tried to do with these kids. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. So many great programs being operated by the Oklahoma City Public Schools Foundation. Yes, and meeting a need that certainly exists in a very efficient way. Absolutely, and, and there are ways that people can get involved, and one of them is by going on the website that's dedicated to the foundation. That's okckids.com, okckids.com. I imagine there's a, a program that you can uh, get involved with there. And, of course, we have a website where we'd love you to log on and tell us about a guest that you'd like to see on an upcoming show or a subject that you'd like to see us discuss. Our website is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. In the meantime, I want to thank Percy Kirk and Mary Malone for coming on our show and telling us more about the foundation. So much great work as the business community and the general public gets more and more involved in the inner city district in Oklahoma City. For that's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you for joining us. For Kent, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here on The Verdict.